I survived 100 days building my royal house in Vanilla Faction's expanded empire. In this series, we will work our way from nothing to becoming a high stellarch, a second hand of the emperor and leader of one of the great royal houses. In order to succeed, we will have to contend with all the regular threats of the Rim world, as well as enduring noble pageantry and gossip, alongside dangerous acts of terrorism from a new group called the Deserters. These enemies of the Empire will stop at nothing to destroy the great nation, starting with our noble hierarchy. Will we have what it takes to escape the Rim world and join the Empire in lordship over the galaxy? Kaito Von Braun will be the name of our noble leader and the pawn who will eventually become the High Stellarch. He was born to a rich family on a desert planet elsewhere on the Rim. His home was destroyed by hired goons and his family killed during his childhood. He survived many years alone in the cold desert before eventually rejoining society as an adult. He chose to join up with a local planetary defense force, and he spent the next years of his life living in an orbital station, defending the planet against all manner of threats. Once his term of enlistment was completed with the orbital garrison, he cashed out on his well-earned pay and struck out to a sparsely populated rim world. His goal? To rebuild the house he lost so many years ago and to become a loyal and influential part of the vast refugee empire. His years spent in seclusion gave him a predisposition to being alone, aided by his love of personal Max. His difficult upbringing and service in the orbital garrison also made him extremely tough as well. He carries with him a bite scar on his right leg, given to him by an insectoid during his service. Our ideology will be locked for this playthrough, as Kaito is a believer in an old archic religion. The Arcotech inheritors believe in transhumanism and human primacy. They're also somewhat collectivist and prefer to live underground, where they feel closest to the buried Arcotech gods whom they worship. We will be using a custom scenario for this run, a modification of the standard Mechanator. This Royal Mechanator scenario will start our singular pawn with a lifter and agrahand, as well as a pulse rifle, alongside the usual Mechanator starting materials. Our storyteller will also be unique to this mod. Her name is Ariadne Archduchess, and she aims to be a harsh but fair storyteller who uses wealth steps to govern threats to our colony. Every wealth increase of 5,000 sends a threat of some kind our way, in order to make sure we get a good story alongside a good challenge, I have set our difficulty to strive to survive at 500% threat level. Inspired by the stories of the Empire since childhood, you have decided to become part of the social order and build your house from nothing. You knew you could only achieve greatness with help. People were too unreliable, so you chose to take on mechanoids as your servants, workers, and warriors. Now you finally migrated to this sparsely populated rim world with some of your metallic helpers. Finally, you have space to grasp your true potential. The stage is set, and now we begin. We have landed in a pretty good area. We are nearby to a large and beautiful coastline bordering a temperate forest. There is plenty of deep rock for a secure mountain base, with limestone, marble, and slate scattered all around. Marble in particular was an important choice I made during map selection because of its higher beauty stats for decor and structures, which will become critical later on to make sure we have a properly royal base. I begin scouting out the map. The bottom section seems to be blocked off by a narrow valley, which just needs a few tiles mined to expose the bottom. Once everything has landed, I select a name for our two mechs. The lifter will become Liftocracy, and the Agrahand will become Bessie. Kaido has rather poor growing skills, so I make sure to have Bessie begin tearing down some trees, so we will have wood available for future creations. I break through the few tiles needed to expose the bottom part of the map, and see there isn't much there, mainly some steel on the south side of the map edge. I spend a lot of time deliberating on where to put the base, but I eventually decide that the best option by far will be near the center of the map, on the portion of mountain right in front of the large fertile growing zone. This is a deep mountain that will provide much safety, but is also close to steam geysers for power and has good access to fertile soil for 
totally legitimate pharmaceutical endeavors. I begin planning the base. I want the hospital to be easily accessible from the outside, but also close to where I'll put the future kill box. After all, organ I mean involuntary organ redistribution will be vital to our colony's trading strategy. I also want the bedrooms on the outside of the mountain, as those will be targeted first by breacher raids. After that, the primary concern is where to locate the freezer, recreation slash dining room, the storage room, and the production room. These will all need to be central for an efficient base design. I have now finalized the base design. I have tried to leave about three blocks of mountain between the outside and inner parts of the base. This will help us keep underneath the impenetrable mountain roof. This will also prevent raiders from turning our colonists' beds into drop pod landing zones. I have used a planning mod to lay out the base. The largest design feature in blue is the eventual kill box and tunnel into it. Red denotes storage areas, some of which are next to the kill box hallways, so as raiders perish, their bodies will pile safely into the storage zones. Orange denotes bedrooms and major hallways. The bedrooms are all 4x5 tiles, which should be sufficient until the eventual royalty arrives. The yellow section is the hospital and research area, but in the beginning it will be used as a common room while we mine out the base. Black will be the shared freezer and rec room combo. Green will be the production and mech room, located right next to our storage. The purple will be our ideology room, and will eventually lead into Kaito's throne room. The base will slightly change in the future, but this setup will remain mostly concrete. I set Kaito to work mining out the medical room for a place to sleep and store his items. I build a latrine and well outside for his hygiene needs as well. Liftocracy works hard to haul everything from the drop zone to a storage zone outside the base entrance, while Bessie dutifully begins planting heel root and harvesting wood. I begin to replan the shared rec area for the freezer in light blue to help remind myself of the future functions of the space. It includes a small area up top for a separated butchery. Next up is a wind turbine for power, as my mechs will begin running low on juice very soon and need a place to charge. I build a light inside the cave so Kaido can continue mining efficiently, as darkness imposes a steep penalty on work speed. I also designate a growing zone for food. I place a large battery to store power and a table to prevent Kaido from offing himself because he didn't have a place to eat at. Our first event, visitors from the Federation of Kuom are passing through. They seem to have some items to trade, but I'm not interested at the moment, so I simply let them go on their own way. Our first threat, a mad hare. Bessie and Liftocracy act as a meat shield while Kaido dispatches it. Bugs Bunny will bug us no longer. We've finished the mech recharger, now onto the freezer. Interesting, a cargo pod with a crystalline mace. We will grab it for trading. Our freezer is finally completed. Right in the nick of time, too, as we are running low on survival meals and will need a place to store our harvests. Finally, our first raid from the gas slickers. We are attacked by a single raider. We form up a defensive line and the attacker goes down unusually quickly. Once I examine our foe, it makes much more sense. Jet here is a genie, a xenotype that is naturally good at crafting and construction, but also very weak and sensitive to pain, like a lifted truck owner. Basically, she is a gigantic nerd. With her excellent shooting and intellectual skills, alongside her good crafting and construction, she becomes an easy first choice for recruitment. She is also naturally an undergrounder, even better for our colony. Unfortunately, she is ugly, but hey, that's why we live in the darkness, right? I quickly mark some sleeping spots in our newly built freezer for a temporary place to imprison her. I have Kaido begin converting her for eventual recruitment. We have finally finished our prison. Its location next to the freezer eventually causes problems as Jet becomes hypothermic. 
We eventually fix that by building a campfire for her. On the bright side, you can't break out if you've frozen into a block of ice, can you? Kaido finishes hollowing out the cave base and moves on to creating a toxic waste freezer, as the mech rechargers will soon be cranking out large amounts of waste. More visitors from the Federation of Kuom. Finally, our first mech gestator is completed. We start by creating a constructoid to help us around the base. More mechs will come later, but we have to wait as steel reserves are quite low. Our second gestator is complete, and a lifter is now cooking inside. Liftocracy will soon be joined by another disciple of the lift. Jet is finally converted to our ideology. Kaido will now begin recruitment efforts. He is sorely lacking human partners right now and could use the help turning our hollow rock den into something livable. A young child has come to beg for silver. He allegedly needs 70 silver to buy back his older sister who has been captured by pirates. As Kaido is on an honorable path to royalty, he decides to help the impoverished child. The child leaves and we never hear from him again. Our first constructoid has been gestated. I decide to name him Archimedes after the famous Greek engineer. A new child named Isamu is begging for help. He is apparently being hunted by nine iguanas. I don't really need a nine-year-old in the colony right now. And besides, it's just a bunch of iguanas. I'm sure he will be fine. Spolitarian has now been gestated. He will join his brother Liftocracy in hauling for the colony. The power grid is seeing some decent usage now, so I build a second wind turbine to tide us over until we can get geothermal power up and running. Kaido is getting tired of living with the mechs, as they tend to watch him while he sleeps. He begins tunneling further into the mountain where he will begin construction of his new bedroom. A shaman merchant has decided to visit us. We have plenty of heal root and he has nothing else of value, so I decide not to trade with him. For some reason, it seems like the shaman merchant group has decided to kill one of the wild humans roaming the map. Unfortunately for the wild human, he learns that numbers are critical in a battle. Now that we have a freezer and spare power, it's time to start building a nutrient paste network. This will help stretch our food supplies and also takes advantage of one of the best features of transhumanist ideologies, their love of nutrient paste. I'm using a mod that allows nutrient paste to be stored and distributed through a vast network of underground pipes. The network will even connect to our eventual growth and biosculptor pods in the future. Our base is beginning to expand, so now is a perfect time to begin creating a clean sweeper for keeping the base relatively clean. I also want to improve our defensive capabilities now that our wealth is increasing, so a Militor is also added to the gestation list. Finally, Kaito's bedroom is completed. It still needs furnishings and, you know, floors. But hey, it's better than sleeping next to the paste dispenser. The Clean Sweeper and Militor have completed gestation. I named the Clean Sweeper Roomba for hopefully obvious reasons. The Militor will be named Romulus, with his brother Ramus eventually joining him. I only really ever build two Militors in a playthrough, so Romulus and Ramus is a perfect set of names. A wild boar decides to go Manhunter while Archimedes is tearing down an ancient structure and attacks him. Despite his and Roomba's best efforts, they are both downed. Kaido soon rolls up, however, and finishes off the boar with a few well-placed pulse rifle shots. Our first exotic goods caravan arrives. I'm quite poor still, so I don't end up trading with them. Jet has finally decided to join the colony. With her now being part of the group, we can select a name for the colony. Kaido's Landing will be the new name of the colony, and the faction will now be known as the House of Kaito. In anticipation of Jet joining, I have also hollowed out a new bedroom for her to sleep in, and I begin furnishing it now that she has joined. 87 days in, and we are finally placing our first high-tech research bench. Now that Jet is a part of the colony, her exceptional intellectual skills can be put to good use. Our first goal will be to research geothermal technology, so we can take advantage of our many geothermal vents. While smoothing walls works just fine, it takes a large amount of time and only yields walls with a beauty rating of 1. 
I will be using an alternative wall from Vanilla Furniture Expanded instead. Marble fine walls will be used extensively in the colony. They are first going to be used in the bedrooms. I begin planning an exterior wall that will cover most of the fertile growing zone outside our base. This will give us a protected spot to grow our totally legal pharmaceutical products and other crops in the future. I also make sure to remove all fertile soil tiles from underneath the walls and replace them inside for future use. A mod called Soil Relocation allows us to move different types of soil around with hard labor. This will allow us to focus all of the fertile land inside the walls. In a stroke of good luck, two caravan buffaloes walk into the map. They carry a small amount of silver and plasteel, as well as a large amount of components and glitter world medicine. This is a great event. We send out the entire colony to go and hunt the two buffaloes, in order to ensure that we can kill both without one walking off the map. In opposition to our earlier luck, a small group of man-hunting squirrels descends upon the colony. They set themselves upon Bessie first, but fortunately Romulus and Ramus make quick work of them while Kaido and Jet sleep. We begin to suffer some power issues again, so I figure now is a good time to add a third wind turbine. A cow named Lucia crash lands from orbit. For some reason, I decide to rescue her. Unfortunately, she doesn't join us despite us saving her life, so I decide that she will make for some tasty nutrient paste instead. In order to continue improving our colonist bedrooms, I decide to add some fine marble and limestone flooring to both bedrooms. This should improve both mine and the colonist's mood, since the rock floor is a little ugly to look at. We have finally finished expanding the rec room and freezer. The prison will be relocated as we are beginning to need all the storage space the freezer has to offer. I decide to locate the prison next to the rec room and future kill box tunnel. It will mean that raider bodies will spill into the prison during raids, but that may save us time hauling prisoners to bed. More caravan animals have decided to wander in. This time, the caravan consists of three camels carrying silver, medicine, and some animal wools. Similarly to last time, we send the entire colony out to hunt the camels. We want to make sure none escape. We manage to kill all three camels with no casualties. A slaver caravan arrives next. I decide to peruse their inventory of indentured servants and find a good one named Jower. He is a pirate talented in shooting, crafting, construction, and social skills. He will make a perfect moral guide for the colony. Now that we have purchased Shower, I decide to keep him as a slave for the time being to help do some construction around the base. Later, I'll imprison him and begin converting him to our ideologian so that he can join the colony and participate as our moral guide. The prison is also completed just in time for Shower. It's not technically set as a prison right now though, more as a barracks until we can get him a private room. We are beginning construction on it now. In a rather unusual turn of events, it seems Jet and Kaido have fallen in love with one another. Despite her lackluster appearance, Kaido seems to be head over heels regardless. This will be a boon for us as well, since lovers are always happier together. Jower's room is now complete. His is not yet as beautiful as the others, but we will improve upon it shortly. We have finally completed research for geothermal power. I have prepared a small hallway that will lead into a room containing the future geothermal generator. As we finish work on the geothermal corridor and room, we have also completed research on sterile materials. These will be extremely important in the future, as our hospital and research lab will be important to have built sooner rather than later. We have finally reached 100 days. We have a very good head start for the colony now, with a strong set of starting ponds to accompany our leader Kaido, a secure mountain base with fine bedrooms, and a large store of resources and growing crops. In our next episode, the colony will face its first threats, gain new members, and Kaido will gain his first title from the Empire, as well as an heir. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for 200 days in RimWorld VFE Empire.